items in Diablo 4 need some work. And this is the problem. A legendary drops and it's an upgrade. You go, okay, equip and move on. The upgrades are too incremental and there's a poor synergy between the items. However, this issue is an easy problem to fix. D4 has a good foundation and we don't need to throw the baby out with the bathwater. How do we do this? Well, to understand the solution, we have to understand a few things first. One of Diablo 2's main strengths is how it gets the player base to be so excited about the items. <gasps> Yo! And on paper, itemization in Diablo 2 is actually pretty bad. Every class guide says to use Enigma for the armor. Kali, Enigma. Necro, Enigma. Druid, Assassin, Barbarian, Enigma, Enigma, Enigma. Don't try to argue that this is good design. It's garbage. So what does Diablo 2 do to get players excited about the items that Diablo 4 needs to introduce? It's specifically the spikes in player power as you go through gear progression. When you play through a character in Diablo 2, the progression looks like this. Lots of spikes in power. And Diablo 2 has three difficulties, and there are clear items to farm when leveling in each difficulty. For normal, there's the tier tier helm, the stealth rune word, the leaf rune word, and to get these, you farm the countess, you get the runes, and then you make the rune words. For nightmare, you have the spirit sword, lore, splendor, and insight. And to get these, you farm the countess on nightmare, get the runes, farm the bases, and then make the rune words. And in hell, you farm the spirit shield and the shackle and all these other uniques to complete your build. And then in the end game, you farm for higher level runes, and then you farm for rares for those GG items. This structure is relatively simple, but it's pretty satisfying to go through. However, it is pretty dated because it's literally the same thing everyone goes through for every season. And how should this apply to Diablo 4? Diablo 4 needs more synergy with the aspects. The normal, sacred, and ancestral items are a great foundation and gives the spikes in progression. When I was going through my first playthrough, transitioning from normal to sacred items was really satisfying and makes you look forward to finding those upgrades. And as soon as I completed the capstone boss to get to world tier 4, all I was looking for were the words ancestral. And I actually got excited about finding a blue ancestral item. Like right here, this lesser one, it's blue, but it's ancestral. <laughs> And it's so good! I know this sounds really dumb, but the spikes in progression is what is really fun. However, for Diablo 4, this is only a foundation. This needs to be built upon, and just these classifications, these words by itself, are not enough. Rune words from Diablo 2 are an outdated design. While yes, it lets you farm incrementally to progress to a particular rune word, and when you farm everything and socket all the runes in, you get that satisfaction of a finished rune word. But it's outdated because the requirements are arbitrary. For Heart of the Oak, you need to use a mace, but not that kind of mace, because it won't work. Diablo 4 doesn't need this. Diablo 4 can lean into the legendary aspects because they have real potential. There just needs to be better synergy between the aspects. Currently, with a lot of the legendary powers, they're all math related. Percentages multiply with each other, and then you can put them together to do more damage. And honestly, this is fine if they're like filler legendary aspects, but these seem to be the main course for a lot of classes. When we put on these legendaries one by one, you don't feel the power spike that much. Now that's not to say that all the legendary powers are like this. Diablo 4 actually already has good aspects like this, just not enough of them. Aspects like the Frozen Tundra and Glacial Aspect. The Glacial Aspect buffs Blizzard with Ice Spikes, and then the Ice Spikes get buffed with the bigger radius from Frozen Tundra. These two together will actually increase the DPS for that spike power, but it's not through the math, it's from the increased radius effect. And that's really, really cool. Blizzard can introduce more legendary powers that interact like this. For example, you can have a legendary power that'll make your hydras like a cold version that spits out ice shards instead. And this will have a synergy with piercing cold. And with the serpentine aspect, you can have two cold hydras spitting out ice shards at the same time. This can be the equivalent of a rune word that takes three runes, three aspects working with each other. However, unlike rune words from Diablo 2, this is way better because you can explore instead of being spoon-fed a recipe from the game. 
Unfortunately, this is way harder to do properly because of the combinations that can be explored. But if Blizzard is putting effort into the game for the long term, like they say they are, then this should definitely be an area of focus. The legendary aspects should be gated behind the difficulties to maintain those spikes in power. And what I mean is like a pool of legendary aspects that are only available starting in Nightmare, and then a different pool of synergistic aspects that become available in the Torment difficulty. The whole point is to maintain the spikes in power as you progress. Now when adding these new legendary powers that are only available starting in the higher difficulties, Wizard needs to make these legendary powers target farmable. In Diablo 2, Rune Wars don't feel that bad because they're target farmable through the Countess. And these aspects need to be target farmable in a similar way, and I'm not talking about the Codex. The Codex has its particular place in the game, but you should not be able to complete a build with the Codex. The stuff that makes life easier can remain in the Codex, stuff like resource generation or whatever, stuff like that. And completion of the Codex can be the main progression goal when you're going through the normal difficulty. When you unlock Nightmare, you unlock the Tree of Whispers, and I think the Tree of Whispers is a great opportunity to do target farmable aspects. Right now, the cash reward from Whispers is kind of bad, and I think it'll go a long way if they redo the rewards from the caches and take a page from Diablo 3 bounties. In Diablo 3, some builds require a particular unique ring called the Ring of Royal Grandeur, and this ring only dropped from caches, mainly the Act 1 cache. Diablo 4 can do the same thing. We just need to trash the caches that target an item slot and replace them with a choice of themed caches. And with the theme caches, you can have them guarantee that they drop an aspect from a pool of 3 to 5 aspects that are not available in the codex, and that lets you target a particular aspect that you're looking for. And the reward is satisfying without feeling like a checklist like the codex. This would give greater purpose to the whispers and a real reason to do them, especially when building up your character through nightmare difficulty and beyond. And if the pool of legendaries expands when you unlock Torment difficulty, you will still have a reason to do the Whispers. And speaking about Torment difficulty, once you complete your build and start farming, hunting for good rolls on rares is supposed to be a main endgame activity. Unfortunately with rares, there's a learning curve to recognizing the stats, and the friction needs to be reduced wherever it can, especially when it comes to recognizing good items. Now I'm not saying to simplify the stats or anything like that, I'm just simply saying the rares need to be easier to read. Right now in Diablo 4, it's all over the place. Critical strike damage is in the first bullet here, but the third bullet on the other ring. Critical strike chance is in the third bullet here, but the first bullet on the other ring. And the damage to frozen enemies is in the fourth bullet, but also the second bullet. It's all over the place. I had to read each stat one by one to fully understand what the item is doing for me. And when I find a rare that's actually good, yes, I still get the spike in power progression, but it took so much effort to evaluate the item that the impact is way lessened, and that's very unfortunate. Whoa! Holy smokes! Three seconds is a long time. In Diablo 2, the stats always display in a specific order, and implementing this improvement in Diablo 4 will go a long way. If you take a look at the boots, you can see that the faster run walk is generally the first stat. The middle stats are always resists, and the last stat is always magic find. And over time, you kind of recognize this pattern, and these items will develop like a certain look that rares need to stand out. Diablo 4 needs to mimic this and be able to nurture that look of good rare items. So when I look at a good rare, I get that strong dopamine hit all at once. And displaying the stats in a consistent order is a way to do that. And honestly, I think this issue is a way higher priority than adding new stats or doing a loop 2.0, which are definitely issues that affect the endgame loop, but will not be addressed anytime soon because of the effort that it takes. And even if they do add new stats before making this change, it won't be as impactful just because of the effort it takes to read the item. Now I'm not saying that these changes will 100% fix the game, but these changes are definitely the biggest bang for the buck, especially aligning the stats on items and reworking the Tree of Whisper rewards. Developing better synergistic legendary aspects is definitely not a low effort task, but it's definitely what the game needs.